Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Hyrule Chronicles. This is episode 99, and uh, I am the GM Articulate T uh, of this Legend of Zelda 5th Edition Dungeons & Dragons campaign. And with me as always, I have Renji Vox being played by the Nether Lad. We are so close <laughs> to that triple digit. I can taste it. <laughs> I have Alvarans playing Hikansio. See, we have to get out of the plane of lament this episode, so we can have the uh, penultimate or like uh, episode one hundred beach episode. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I have Zidan Shari being played by Rubber Part. I'll have to look up sea bears. Sea bears. They are our beach very episode. Small. X. Uh, oh wait, sorry, I'm thinking of water bears or tortoises. Yeah, I was, gonna, I was gonna say my first thought was like, what, why would you need to? Why would you need to be shape into a into a tardigrade? What? For the beach what's, episode. What, what CR is a tardigrade? Um, <laughs> hmm. I would say either very low because they are teeny tiny, and they can't really do much damage, or very high because it takes a lot to kill them. Uh, I would actually say that walruses are bear the bears of the sea. Probably. Uh, but anyway. Sure, I can be a walrus. Also, I'm Keystroth, I'm Max, hello. That's the person. Oh, yeah, no. hello. <laughs> <laughs> we got side. We got sidetracked <laughs> by the challenge rating of Tardigrades. Um, <laughs> uh, but yes, we're all here. So, what happened last time? So, uh, last time we uh, interacted with... Uh, Minister Simeon, or rather his spirit, it was him, but it was him trapped in the plane of lament for being dead. Um, and so we, we, between him and Donatash, we learned a decent, mostly Donatash, we learned a decent amount of our uh, nemesis in this particular case, uh, the uh, Nasgrada, I believe is his name. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm that he seems to be some form of fiendish lich with a uh, talisman that's his sword where his soul is. And in order to destroy said soul, we have to, uh, or in order to destroy said talisman, we have to get some Imperium, which is a uh, holy metal, so to speak, or a metal from the higher planes. Um, after... Getting the most of that information, uh, Donatash went back to Masbro Village to go take a look at some of the um, magic spikes, nails there to see what was going on, while Simeon took us towards some kind of ship that he had found on his way uh, to meeting Donatash. Um, when we found the ship, we decided to go through and uh, inspect it, Max doing a good majority of the repairs, with magic as we figured out a lot of the uh, different ways that it was supposed to operate at least to the best of our limited ability with it going to different planes or different things um after getting on the horn with uriel uh we found out that it was something called a spell jammer which is apparently a big deal they made like a book about it or something i don't know um, <laughs> just in time. <laughs> um, and we found out that the spell jammer was missing a battery, which is very important in order for us to try to get back home. Um, we also found the company that tried to defend Blackmore Castle, or rather, they found us at the uh, spell jammer. Um, in which case, we caught up with them. Uh, figured out a decent amount of things, and uh, sent them off to, at least while we go get the battery, prepare to escort the people of Masro to the Spelljammer, so that way we can get everyone back home. Um, while they were going off and doing that, we, through a decent amount of looking around and figuring things out, figured out a general area uh, in old ruins that seem to be a natural part of this place of lament, um, figured out where this battery might be. And I believe that is where we left off. Indeed. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. Um, so we rejoin our companions uh, as they have uh, they have a heading and are about to set off. However, it is worth noting at this particular point in time that um, the uh, it's a bit like the way that time works here is has been troubling uh in that not only uh, like at first it feels uh, the only thing that you've thus far known is that time moves significantly slower here compared to the material plane um from your conversations with mara and uriel it's been at least a couple of days from what they've what they've said um as you've kept in contact with them uh but it's at this point that you probably feel another side effect of the Plane of Lament, much in the same way that uh, a day may go by significantly quickly without your notice. Um, you're suddenly feel you're starting to feel the effects of being on your feet and doing things for overly long. Um, it's uh, your natural intuition and, and ability to discern your own body's needs tells you that it would be advisable if you were to have a rest at this point or risk experiencing exhaustion. And this rest, how long does it need to be? Uh, you would need to be partaking in a long rest. Okay. I, don't know. I think I would look around um, at the others to see if, like, what I'm noticing is in any way, shape, or form universal. I would I say yes. Yeah. Oh, probably. <laughs> hmm. We need to find this battery, but I think it might be a good idea if we take a rest first. Okay. We can haul up in the ship and I can... Um, Didn't we walk away from the ship a while ago? Oh, we did already. Oh, sorry. Oh, did you already? Okay. I didn't, I didn't know I was asking. Oh. I don't I think that we were walk away from go. the ship. We sent everyone off, and then we ended right there as we were like, had our heading to go forward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. But yeah, we yeah. can pull up in the ship. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, uh, uh, the ship has um, enough cover and everything to form a decent shelter, and. You probably have the resources that will enable you to uh, um, to uh, sorry uh, to keep a light going while you rest, so you won't have to worry about scarabs. Um, mm. But um, yeah, you uh, you can very easily set up camp within the ruins of the spell jammer and uh yeah um i'll keep first watch okay i'll watch with renji okay Me and Sladen on second then. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Um, for our first watch, I would like those keeping watch to give me perceptions, and those sleeping to give me wisdom saves. Oh dear. Uh, Thirteen. Oh, Seventeen. Okay. Uh, Twenty-eight for perception for me. 
24 perception. Okay. So, we will start with the currently awake members. Um, it's... A as you find yourself sitting around perhaps a, a campfire or a... Uh, just whatever you have on hand in order to maintain that light and looking out into the darkness, it's... It is actively quite disconcerting how lonely and isolated the entire situation feels. It's only by the absence of normal things that you have seen and experienced while you were camping out in the material plane that it hits you properly in moments of silence between the two of you. Uh, you note the lack of wind. You note the lack of ambient animals. The, the fact that there are no stars in the sky or even anything that could be considered cloud cover. It's just empty. Uh, almost as far as the eye can see. Um, you do catch the occasional flitter and click of passing scarabs. Ones that uh, attempt to breach the um, to breach the field of light that you have that you are surrounding yourselves in um, and ultimately regretting it and retreating um, but mm. otherwise uh, it's just cold indifferent silence mm. I do not like this place. Me neither. <sighs> oh. Renji? Mm hmm Because Mara wanted to update some things, and I know that the time thing's weird, will you let her know that we're taking a break to rest? I will, yeah. I'll... Pull out the stone. And I'll uh, check in with her. Okay. Uh, yeah, you say something through the stone, Mara says. Hey, um. Hi. Hi. Uh, still here. Okay. okay. Oh, uh, like, uh, like the, the second I say still here, I realize, oh time difference we're still here we are currently taking a break we may have found a means of getting out of here um oh yeah you it was with the real... spell jammer yeah you mentioned um, the 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 ship thing um we are getting um we're tr going to try and find a battery to power it um but currently we're taking a uh a rest um this place uh, feels it feels weird to be here. It feels like the time difference is it's catching up with us. I I guess I can imagine so. Um, just uh, just don't push yourself. Um, I I don't know where there might be uh where this battery might be that you're looking for. I can only wish you luck with that. Um, just, yeah, just, just be, just be careful. Um, we'll, we'll do our best. Um, the, may I ask how long has it been? Since you vanished? Yeah. About a week. Uh, okay. Thank you. Any um, particular news? Uh, no, besides what has already been discussed, um, I, I think Kai stopped by in the, uh, in the city briefly, um, to talk about, uh, Artemark and everything, um. Right. No, I'll, I'll it, let her finish. Uh, other than that, there hasn't really been much of anything, um. I think 
news about a village just disappearing has um I've been overhearing things at the castle and they say that the uh the the war in the west is not exactly going to plan anymore um with Mazro disappearing uh there's rumors that Rudal is contemplating switching sides uh and yeah um Rudal was on our side for for the foreseeable future for for now right dm yeah Rudal and king's ward were the two allied villages and it was the other two who were against you and uh then yeah according to mara apparently Rudal is considering switching to the other side because of the disappearance mm -hmm. of masro um not in this uh the way mara explains it it's not necessarily like a conspiracy that the royal family had disappeared an entire village no it's not that it's like rudol is getting concerned that the uh that the kingdom is becoming incapable of providing protection to settlements and uh that doesn't sit well with a few people um yeah Uh, I have the stone on speaker, so he can't can listen in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> yep. Yeah. Speaker stone. Mm. Um. And I just sigh when I hear this. We are going to try our best to get back here with the villagers as soon as possible. Okay, um, last thing, uh, I don't know how s these spelljammer things work, but my assumption may be that it's not, um, it's not, like, tied to any specific spot, um, so I guess my question is, if you're planning on having it come back to, uh, come back to the, here, where exactly you're going to land it because i can go and meet you there if that's the if if that's the plan um we are planning on going as far as i can tell to uh, uh sarcosa sarcosa okay uh given that that is a well there's ship yards there and this ship is uh apparently in need of of a lot of repair Okay, um, if that's the case, just let me know when you're making your way back and preparing things for, um, uh, travel. I will make my way to Sarkoza and meet you there. Um, but, yeah, uh, be careful. Um, I've got to go and talk to Uriel again. Uh, I'll try and, I'll try and get in touch with you again if anything comes up. Thank you for keeping in touch. No problem. Stay safe. We'll do our best. Thank you. I rub my temple and look over at Hakan. Well. New updates on the Civil War, it seems. Well, we're planning on figuring that stuff out with Risha when we're ready to go find Delilah and Cassandra. So until then, uh, it sucks, but I mean, Khan kind of shrugs. Not much to do about it. Oh, shrug. That being said, I had two very silly ideas. The first one was, well, there's enough room in Zora's domain for a ship. We could just go talk to our holy friend there. Uh, <laughs> and then the other one was, poor Mara. She's got like all of this anxiety, and then like she yeah. finishes her sentence and waits hours for a response. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but anywho, yeah, I'll watch. Uh, yeah, you're other than other than the unpleasantness of the area that you find yourselves in. Uh, you are uh, otherwise undisturbed in your in your um in your watch. Nothing el Nothing untoward happens. I will occasionally glance at the uh, two 
sleeping companions to see like how they're doing um because while i th i feel i need rest i also don't feel comfortable here and i don't know if i would be able to like get a proper trans uh, sleep going um okay uh as you uh, as our two sleeping people sleep and have made their wisdom saving throws um i just need to read did they make their saving throws or their did they make their saves did they succeed we'll find out probably not <laughs> oh no uh, Okay. Um, now, neither of you, considering the uh, considering the events that have thus far transpired, um, that have led you to this point, are unfamiliar with dreams that are not dreams. Um, you've had, you have had casual conversations with someone who has utilized your dreams as a form of, um, as a form of communication, for better or for worse. Mm -hmm. Um, so, Zayden and Max, you are both aware, at least, perhaps a little too late, that something is entering your mind. Um, as you, in your dreams, you perceive this as, um, much like the outside world. It is a dark void, more featureless than before, but you can tell that something is there. Something in that darkness watches you and assesses you. Something within that darkness wishes to know more. And... In that same instance from that darkness, uh, as if emerging from a, a fog that uh, that is own, that obscures your vision up to a few up to only a few feet to you, you can see what appears to be a tidal wave of skeletal hands reaching out to grab at you in the blink of an eye, um, as you are. As you are sleeping, perhaps the last thing that you are aware of um, before uh, before you wake up um, is a voice in your mind that says, um, ah, Now I understand. And then you wake up with a start. Okay, uh, I'll sort of do that thing, shaking their head as they wake up and we'll look oh, around. Max has definitely got the, the gauntlet up with all the lightning and shit. <laughs> but that's, you know, his usual way of waking up. Oh. You've had your full four hours, but it is not it is not a pleasant experience. Hmm. Well, your dreams we are gonna suck here. Oh. Well, I'm used to that sort of thing, sadly. Oh well. It's your turn. We only saw a few scarabs. I, uh, still having like a uh, aspiration, uh. Mm -hmm. I jam the hilt, uh, let, yeah, uh, uh, the hilt almost first into the ground, mm -hmm. and, uh, I let go, but I do not extinguish it, because apparently, uh, as long as it's attuned, I, I don't see a reason for it not to be able to just continue 
lighting yeah. up. I'm willing to allow that. That's fine. Should one of us hold the sanding stone while you're asleep? I give it over to uh, Max. Yeah. And I will summarize what we've discussed, including uh, the situation over in um, um, uh, over in the villages and uh, specifically what Rudol Village is maybe going to do and that we have plans to meet our friend Mara in Sarkosa. Max's response to the villages thing is just okay, because Max is no shit about the wall. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, as you trade posts, I would like uh, perception rolls from those keeping watch, wisdom saves from those going to sleep. 23. 21 perception. I have a plus yeah, seven to wisdom. Please don't go below a six. No! <laughs> Rip. Oh dear. Um... Uh, oh dear. <laughs> well, that is uh, below a six. Okay. Uh, so, as um, as before, uh, with our with our two uh two watching individuals uh you you kind of makes uh make note of the same differences between this place and the material plane the small things that you perhaps took for granted or didn't pay too much attention to their absence now unsettles and uh alarms you perhaps um Perhaps the only the only discernible things that you can see are the uh, walls of the ship around you, the um, uh, the little details of each other within the light of a light of aspiration, but otherwise, it is it is lonely and cold and isolated and uh, just not a good place to be. Yeah, Max. Um, uh is just pacing around because sitting still here just feels wrong max what you notice with your perception being so high in this instance is uh renji and hikan's um statement about the scarabs being around was in it was in fact accurate they had uh there are only a few scarabs there um but this, uh, but it seems that over the time that you have been resting, uh, you probably count now a few more than you were expecting. And as you glance over to one of the windows on the outside of the wreck of the uh, of the spell jammer, you can see quite a few clambering and claw clawing up the glass and um, along the side of the ship. It seems there's quite a few out there, but since they can't enter the bright light of aspiration, you are safe if perhaps um, with an audience. I'll pick up a couple, pick off a couple with some fire bolts. Mm -hmm. There's like this, like as a, as the swarm begins to slowly and gradually build over the hours, like the fire bolt goes from uh, a, cr a light crackle of one particular scarab to the impact of the spell causing a splash of scarabs within the swarm um and uh what was once silence is now this unnerving low thrum and click of many many insects around you um probably comes to mind that before departing, you may want to do a bit of pest control. <laughs> Perhaps. Um, but yeah. Uh, is there anything the two of you wanted to talk about or do in the intervening time while you were on watch? I have no topics of discussion. Okay. 
Alrighty then. Um, the sending stone doesn't light up at all, or it doesn't. Um, a voice doesn't come through. It seems whatever's happening back in the material plane, nothing of note is currently going on. Um, with our two sleeping fellows, um, much like before, you go to sleep, what seems to be at first a dreamless sleep, in a void that you can perceive, but ultimately not really interact with or not take in any details until of course this rush of skeletal hands emerges from the fog and tries to snatch you. Hikan, your will is of quite uh, a refined form. Um, perhaps there is a part of you that with your uh, with your learning through uh your understanding of Etheria and all the and the general gods and aspects and uh, changing your um, your martial discipline to something that can actively help or harm someone through through that form of focus, uh, the the wave of hands is unable to grasp you as it crashes into something imperceptible and bounces backwards, retreating into the shadows. Um, you feel an intrusion on your mind has ultimately failed to accomplish what it was trying to do. Um, Renji. Um, mm -hmm. The hands overwhelm you. Um, and oddly enough, in this particular instance, uh, one hand, one thing tries to push back against it in lieu of you, you can see the elongated, grey-skinned hand of the Harvester try and use their magics to push something back. But, oh. somehow, that Bulwark 2 fails. And the both oh. of you are overwhelmed in, in that same fashion. Oh no. Um, and... As the world goes dark again, and you can see two crimson orbs off in the distance, attesting the both of you, and it says, Now this is curious. Hmm. Do I oh. see, like, our Go, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> This body voice. How long has it been since the world has changed? I shall have to see for myself. Are you going to say? Uh, I was going to say, do I notice the harvester with me? Sadly not. Darn it. Hmm. Um... I wish I could have looked at that freakish harvester creature thing. Yeah. Uh, as you, uh, as the both of you jolt awake again, um, yeah, you, uh, you've also have had your full four hours of rest, but it is not, it is not pleasant. Renji, perhaps, because of the experience of Linked with the Harvester, the feedback perhaps has probably shaken you a bit more than you might expect. Mm. Um, but you don't suffer any mechanical issues. It's just... It, it was it was not a great amount of sleep. Um, mm. and it's not helped by the fact that as the two of you awaken, you, no you then notice the overwhelming sound of clicks and buzzes of the copious amounts of scarabs that are now at the edge of your light. Waking up after that, kind of glance around, I pick up aspiration um, and uh, start, I think I would uh, shoot off a few Eldritch Blasts hmm. at the scarabs. Yeah, yeah you... Uh... You much like uh, much like Max witness the the impact of the of the Eldritch Blast uh, 
disintegrating a few scarabs, some of them pixelating away into the into the ether as you uh, as you are familiar with. Um, and then I will just quiet, but not particularly under my breath, say, Harvester, are you there? The Harvester does not respond. I don't know whether I should be scared or excited about that noise. Uh, but that news. So, was, was I right? Did your dream suck too? Uh, yeah, I got uh, plucked up by a bunch of skeletal hands. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm uh, not happy and I feel like the... Did I drop the harvest the name harvester with you guys before? Probably. Seems over to overwhelm the harvester as well. Max is just sounded like is that a good thing? I do. <laughs> is he sad? I have no I have no clue if that is a good thing or a bad thing. It's curious. Well, Hikon... uh... I was gonna say Hikon lights some torches and then just chucks it at the wall of scarabs. Yeah. Casually, yeah. not like I'm yes. eating it just to. Yeah, yeah. The uh, this the torch, torch lit. Yeet. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, you throw the torch into the mess of scarabs. Uh, it manages to catch a couple that cannot escape the light immediately, but they all soon scatter. And there's now a pool of untouched area where that torch burns, um, and the scarabs dare not tread. Shall we go? No, we can't leave all these things here. No, true. I guess we're taking them with us. How to deal with all of them? Let's see. Well... If we're a source of food, they want to eat us. They'll follow us. I suppose there is that. And we'll just double check afterwards, because the people in Mazra that'll come and know that the things don't like light, so. Hmm. I'll get this battery. And he kind of just goes and grabs his torch and just starts heading out of the out of the spell jamming. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so as you as you gather your things um, and head outward to um, and head outward to your towards your destination, you see whatever. Whatever scarabs are remaining at this point, they are, um, they are attempting to follow you, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, of course they cannot cross the threshold of that light. So much like in in any kind of media in which you are depicted as being a Mister Swarm, um, you kind of, as you move this uh, this wave of darkness begins to like maneuver around you. Don't worry about that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna keep shooting them. Yeah. Yeah. Same. Okay. So. Because I don't as... really have any AoE spells that. Actually, no, I could do a dragon's breath. I'll do one dragon breath. Mm. Okay. To just clear out a big chunk. Yeah. As a, uh, as your, as your lightning breath, uh, lights up the area around you and just kind of begins to disintegrate a massive amount of these scarabs. Um, eventually, by the time you get a, dis a decent distance away from the ship, they are, they are essentially all but gone. There's like one or two errant scarabs that are remaining that you can easily pick off with your cantrip spells or ranged attacks and, uh. Eventually, after what seems like half an hour to an hour of walking, you are once again 
alone in the uh in the plain of lament um and onwards towards your your next destination um it feels like uh contrary to the journey to the spell jammer and to the hut in which you were reunited with Simeon, uh, you find yourselves being more aware of how long this particular trip is taking. It feels like uh, walking in pitch darkness on a treadmill. You are spending so long walking in a straight line on relatively flat ground, but knowing that no progress is being made, or feeling that no, no progress is being made. Um, after a couple of hours go by of this, it's almost maddening, um, that you are, uh, that so little is, that it feels like so little distance is being covered. Um, but after roughly an hour or so, uh, like, when I say an hour, after roughly four or six hours, four to six hours, rather, you eventually see the silhouetted shape um, that you were heading towards. It is a singular building um, made of old crumbling stone, uh, square blocks that seem to be have seem to have been carved out of the same material that the plane of lament is made from this kind of monochrome uh carved rock that despite the fact that as you are well aware a vast a great variety of stone masonry is usually gray um with the re with the way the rest of the area is, it feels like even the color out of this, whatever color there might have been, has been drained. Um, but the building itself is immense, uh, and is oddly unlike the other buildings that you would have experienced here. Seems very much at home in the plain of lament, like the other places in of themselves were. were quite clearly something that seemed to have been pulled from the material plane. This feels like it was made here. Hmm. Do we announce our presence, or do you want me to go in sneaky-beaky-like? Does it look like there's signs of anything living here? Like any disturbed ground? Uh, I'd rather me... not split up. Uh, mm -hmm. Give me a survival check. No. No. Oh. I'll try. I'm good at those. Yeah, 15. Okay. Not too bad. Okay. Uh, with a 15, uh, you notice a few telltale signs that there might be activity here, um, but, af but it's... It's easy to see at a first glance why one would think that it is as empty as the rest of this place. There are no lights anywhere. There's not even any suggestion of where where like a, a torch or a brazier could be found or rested or lit. Um, the doors in front of you are these immense 20 foot tall slabs of stone uh, that appear to be on hinges. And beneath, at the foot of these doors, there appears to be markings on the floor that indicate that these doors have been opened not necessarily like recently as in within the same day, but maybe like a couple of days ago. And there also appear to be drag marks certain, a certain distance away from that door, which suggests that something had been dragged in or out of this building. Um, the way that the markings on the floor are there, it indicates that this could have been like maybe weeks old at best. But otherwise, there's nothing else that you can determine that is, uh, that would say that there is currently life here. I want to see if the door opens. Sure, yeah, I'll, I'll be there to, uh, provide support. Okay. Max um, wants to get out of here as quickly as possible. Yeah. 
uh, Max, you push open the doors. <laughs> There's a loud, bassy rumble as the stone doors push inwards, and inside you can see a dark corridor that goes quite a distance before breaking off into a T-junction and there being an open door at the end. <sighs> Well, we? Hand side. Hmm. How fast can I, uh, using aspiration, how fast could I cut through, uh, the hinges of this door? Um, it's hard to say without trying. Um, so would you like to try and cut the hinges of the door with your with your sword? I would like to either cut the hinges or try and uh if there's any locking mechanism on the door, I would like to disengage it or melt it. Okay. Um so considering how tall the doors are, that's probably easier. Yeah. The um as you enter into the other side, you can see, and like you turn around to see the other side of the door, it appears to be that there is a, uh, there are handles and rings or of some such that would indicate that the door can be barred, um, mm -hmm. but there's no like lock and key, as, as okay. it were. Um, but if you wanted to try and take out the uh, the barring mechanism so they couldn't place a bar. That works yeah, too. I would like to try that. Okay. Um, you test your weapon against the the stone and metal that exists within this within this rudimentary locking mechanism, mm -hmm. and you find that clearly whatever this metal is or what metal there is here is not the same metal that's used uh, within those needles. And mm -hmm. after it see like you test it and you can see that there's clear wear and tear. Um, it would take maybe an hour to go through the mm. whole set um but it's certainly something that you could do if people have the uh, wish to uh wish to dedicate to that glance over at the others i feel this is uh trap slash ambush worthy location how do you feel about taking the time to making sure our like our means of escape is assured. Max says fine, but he says it through gritted teeth. I can. Sorry, I didn't catch that. I'm looking through my stuff. Ah. And I was just like, I'll just fucking use the quick gun. No. <laughs> How does the uh, um, siren feel? Oh. oh, no. You want it to be open? Yeah. Okay. I go over next to the thing, mm -hmm. uh, to the top of the door, and I pull out a rod, and I click the button, and uh, after I setting it against the door, okay. and I wipe my hands and <laughs> go back to the back inside. <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> we have an immovable rod. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, I was. I was about to ask if you still had it. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. So, uh, yeah, the the doors are tall, but considering your capabilities as a monk, that's literally nothing doing. You just kind of like triangle jump between the two doors, it's slap the move right at the very top, and then hop back down again. Um, mm. But yeah. Uh, so with the doors now firmly open, you can. Uh, continue on inside if you like. As said before, it is a T junction. I'm also um, gonna light a torch and put it on the ground at the okay. open door so no birds can get in. Okay. You light a torch and place it down. Um, and uh, yeah. Uh, so as you uh, as you head down this hallway uh, that is roughly fifty feet long, um, you uh, at the end there appears to be a T junction. Um, with, the, with paths going left and right, and directly in front of you is an open doorway into a large cavernous room um, within which there appears to be a th rather sizable chair made of the same stone that the rest of the building is made of. 
course it is. Gonna poke my head in the room with the shroud in it. Okay. As you do that, um, before something happens, you're able to catch the various details of the location. Um, it is, as you'd expect, quite dark. Um, it appears to be a 60 foot by 60 foot room um, and is also quite tall in the same regard, like 40 feet at best estimate to the ceiling. Uh, in the center of which appears to be a just a hole in the roof, as if it's some kind of funnel or tunnel or something. Um, as you poke your head in, um, you can hear quite quickly uh, the click and uh, buzz of scarabs, and there's a lot of them. And they appear to be coming from that hole in the roof. Um, as you, uh, as, like, as you may react to this and, like, back out of the room or something. To say uh, scarabs. Yeah. Uh, this column of insects rapidly descends from the ceiling and slams into the stonework floor before eventually rising again like, uh, uh, like a whirlwind and amidst uh amidst these insects um is a tall lanky form uh this shadowy sort of creature um that appears to be about 18 19 foot tall um it is thin it has long uh pointed fingers and uh it has two curved horns at the back of its head and a long face uh, with proportions of that of maybe a goat or a ram and uh, it doesn't appear to be whole it definitely looks to be some kind of spiritual uh, spiritual sort of thing um, but as it uh, as it manifests it uh, it spends a moment to kind of look left and then look right um before slowly and calmly descending into the throne. Um, are you guys doing anything at this point? I mean, I'm standing there with my uh, sunblade uh, <laughs> in, my, in my hand. Okay. Uh, but I have not taken any... Like, I, I will keep a defensive stance near my allies. Do I okay. see anything in the room that looks like it might hold a magic battery? Um, give me a perception check. I'm lighting a torch to 21. hold in one of my hands. Okay. For the 21, you do not seem to see any kind of container. Besides the chair and the hole in the ceiling, this room seems to be featureless. I'm going to whisper to the others, I don't think it's in this room. Okay. Um, as Which you, way? Uh, I don't know. As you uh, contemplate this, um, the figure in the chair uh, casually raises a hand. Um, and at first it looks like he's gesturing to you, but mm -hmm. uh, before him, a like a white wisping mist... Um, spirals before him and there you can see the upper half of what appears to be a heavily armored Lizalfoss in like a, a ghostly form um and uh the first like you hear the creature say I will break Status and uh, the spirit uh, that you can recognize as the Arbiter uh, responds with Things have been advancing at a pleasant pace, my lord. The 
I trust you are aware that the village of Mazro has since been placed into your care. Uh, and uh, it responds in kind. <laughs> I can sense the beating hearts. A great many of them do not know what has truly transpired. Many of them are still in denial. Mortals are such pathetic creatures. And, uh, the Arbiter says, I had thought perhaps they might have perished by now, my, my lord. Um, but considering the environment in which they are in, perhaps it is not too long before that occurs. And yes, mortals are rather fickle. Anything to escape despair and pain. My current project is continuing apace in this in this fashion, my lord. The old man is still in great despair, but he is a powerful pawn, I believe. Mm. And my sword. We have yet to find it, but the success of my own efforts, we will have someone who will be able to find it in no time. And what's more, from my own reports, the war within the West will generate quite the bounty of potential soldiers. Mm -hmm. Very well. Continue. And know that I do not tolerate failure. I have graced you by putting you into my servitude, but allowing you to continue to use your own mind. Do not squander that blessing. Of course, my lord. And with that, the mist disappears, and the being that you assume to probably be Nazgradar places his hand back onto the armrest of the chair he sits on. And after a moment, your passive insights tell you that with a slight tilt of his head, he is looking directly at you. Hmm. And after a brief pause, he slowly gets up from his chair. Are we ready to fight a lich? We have a choice. I don't oh. know. Hikan's instinct is just to like wave and just be like, no, don't worry about it. Don't have to get up and trouble yourself. We're just going to go get the thing we're looking for and we'll be out of your hair. <laughs> Hey, you wouldn't happen to see a battery around here, would you? He slowly advances towards you. Okay, we're doing this then. You say 30 feet. 20 feet. These... We do not need to fight here. Your passive insight tells you that there's like... He's not actually ca like preparing to cast a spell. He's just getting closer and closer and closer. And if he can get 10 feet away from you molested, he stops and then he raises his hands gives you a look over again and slowly closes the door to his room <laughs> mm. your passive insight which is honestly quite large is that he, you asset he assessed you and he mm -hmm. did not see any particular threat in you and he's just oh, like good. eh fuck it oh, eh. <laughs> Does it, so he, he closes it in our faces, apparently. Yes. Yeah. He ah. doesn't care that you're here. Ah. <laughs> well, so that's the beginning. We're gonna steal this fucking battery. 
<laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Left or right? <laughs> Lich, please. <laughs> Someone had to make the joke. Okay. So, uh, which way do you say you were going? Left? Right? Left. Left. Okay. You head left. Um, it appears the corridor goes around this room and circles around to the other side where you can see what appears to be the other corridor just kind of at the other end. So it it wouldn't have mattered, but the, um, the yeah, you basically follow a corridor that goes around this room in particular. Um and continues onward um and eventually uh you find yourselves um in a new location um where the 10 foot wide corridor eventually ends in another t-junction in corridors about five foot wide um this uh what I'll do is I'll place you on the map. Yeah, you map. Right. I just need to figure out where exactly it is we are. We are over here. Yep. Very left. Um, there I go. Pull out the javelin of lightning and use it as a a, a a stick as I just drag it across the uh, area as we're walking forward, mm -hmm. okay. just in case. Okay. Ah, uh, there are lots of doors. There are indeed <laughs> lots of doors. Um, yeah. <laughs> that is uh, that is uh, your aspiration, aspiration thing. Yeah. I believe, yeah, that's the max that it can be. Okay. Okay, so, uh, as you are here, um, you can head, once again, either left or right. And there are about the same number of doors and turns in either direction. Left first. Okay. Do, do, do. Look here. Anything in this bedroom? Uh, I, well, I suppose considering where you are, I was going to say considering <laughs> where you are, it could be construed as a bedroom. Um, but uh, <laughs> yeah, you uh, you head down the left corridor and come to the first door, and when you get there, you turn and you see that inside is a stone sarcophagus. Um. Mm. I would say, based off of your collective insights and maybe passive religions and everything like that, uh, what occurs to you at this point is that the Plain of Lament, uh, from what's been explained, ha is basically a place where the spirits of people killed by Nazgradar's minions go so that their existence can be used as fuel for his abilities. Um, the... So it seems weird that there would be a location for housing physical corpses. Um, but then the other thing is, is that uh, Nazgradar, as well as his as well as his followers, have made a habit of themselves um, to pull people into the plane of lament, um, like wholly. Um, so. Chances are, it's not out of the question that there would be physical corpses within this plane, even if there are few. So if there is anywhere that could possibly house this battery, it may well be here. Um, but this is, you can already tell by the general size of the building from the outside when you approached and how uh, big the rest of this area is. You can tell that this is going to be quite a space. Um, so it may take a while to actually begin hunting for something of this variety. Unless, of course, you have abilities or skills that you would like to use in order to try and discern where this object that you seek might lie. Hmm. 
You do not have a word to start playing with. I don't have anything useful here unless you want me to blow the place up. Same. <laughs> so just start checking doors. Okay. Okay. So, this is we'll take a quick peek here. More. Oh, is this all darkness, or is this is there a light here? Uh, it's the only light that's in here is the one generated by yourselves. Okay, so then I can only look up until here, but mm -hmm. on the map I can look up until here. Yeah, because you're you've got uh, extended I only, got, I only got sixty feet feet. Oh, I switched I it out. I switched it out for uh, uh, Eldritch Sight, Detect Magic. Um, so I will yeah. cast that on myself, uh, okay. which I'll have Detect Magic up until 60, uh, 30 foot. Okay. Uh, let me have a look at quickly at Detect Magic. I can... Yeah. And I hope that a uh, Arcane Battery should be uh, magical. I'd be disappointed if it wasn't. Mm. Me too. It might be a dead battery. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's true. Um, actually, as you've come out, of, just come out of that alcove, Renji. Um, as you're looking through, you notice that one of the one of these uh, sarcophagi are open, um, oh. and the edges of it, while it is made of stone, uh, they do not appear to be more than a foot thick, perhaps half a foot. So, okay. in this instance, it is entirely possible that just by looking at the sarcophagus, you will be able to see if anything magical lies within. Okay. So, I will check these four. Okay. Uh, you check those four. And also these two. Thank and you. then I'll check those two, yeah. Yeah. We already passed. It does not appear to be anything magical within those boxes okay this one quickly go to my bookshelf to get a book um, okay <laughs> okay uh let's see that one there mm -hmm. You do see something magical in there. Okay. What, uh... School of Magic? Uh, let me have a look. Uh... Da -da. Just rolling a bunch of tables here. Give me a sec. Mm -hmm. That's quite right. Um, it appears to be faint wisps of divination. Curious. Uh, guys, could you help me? I try okay. to open this. Yeah. The two people who lift will open. Okay. <laughs> I think it's we have plus one, Max and I. Yeah. <laughs> I have uh, plus zero. I also have okay. plus one. Yeah! I will give one of you help. Thank you. Uh, just a moment. Am I proficient in athletics? I'm not. I am! 16. 16. <laughs> okay. For the 16, you heave open the, the lid of the sarcophagus, and inside appears to be um, a humanoid individual with uh, uh, leathery... Uh, rotted skin uh dressed in what appears to be um some chainmail armor of some description um 
with a sword at their side. But the thing that's magical happens to be a scroll which they are grasping in their free hand. Hmm. I will try and take the scroll. Give me a sleight of hand check. Okay. Um, let's see. I have a thing. Uh, yeah, I have a, a plus seven to it. So a three plus seven. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, so, uh, you begin to pull on the scroll and try and delicately remove it, but as you go to the fingers to try and pry them away, you notice mm -hmm. that the fingers slowly tighten. Uh, aspiration to the face. <laughs> <laughs> I okay. follow that up with the shocking graphs to make it spasm. Okay, uh, roll your collective damages. Sneak attack also counts here. Sixteen. Uh, so that is, uh, let's see, twenty-eight points of damage on one attack. Okay. Uh, let's see. All right, that's fine. Um... Yeah, twenty-eight plus forty. Okay. That De um, guy moves even slightly, and the entire party collectively goes, "No." No. <laughs> you. Uh, this is our time to loot. Yeah. Loot graves. You don't need the share anymore. Fuck up. No. <laughs> yeah, Max. You place a hat. You rapidly put a hand down onto the uh, onto the metal no, I'm armor. Punching it. Oh, you, you're punching it. Okay. <laughs> you you punch him, and then as you pull back, there's uh, that's where the gap is for aspiration to go forward and stab straight through. Uh, into the mouth of this creature, through the roof of the mouth, into the brain, um, and it doesn't have the chance to to wail in an undead fashion. There's a flash of necromantic energy as it briefly comes to life, but it is immediately extinguished. And and let's go of the scroll. That was I... exactly the amount of damage you needed to kill it in one hit. <laughs> Good to know gonna put the lid down so it can't get out mm -hmm. yeah. before that i gingerly take uh, the scroll okay you take the scroll um i'm gonna put this on the on the token layer so you sorry. thank you uh but uh yeah uh you take the scroll you open it and have a glance at it it appears to be a scroll of comprehend languages very interesting Uh, how about this one? <laughs> that one does not appear to have anything magical within it. Okay, good. Moving on. Okay. So these four. Mm hmm. <laughs> You're going to hear all them good dice noises today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. ASMR. You find that uh, the top left one appears to have something magical in it. Um, that won't make you roll athletics if you're taking as much time as you might need. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, you open it up. Inside appears to be a skeleton which does not have the cap like enough bones for it to actually form into anything. Um, this is amidst... why you could, should keep your bones. Yeah. And uh, within that, within that small, a small pile of debris, uh, you find what appears to be a small pot, about an, a couple of inches in size. But this is not okay. a alchemist jug, an no. alchemy jar. Okay. 
Darn I have it. a question nope. since we're doing this stuff and there was that yep. weird necromantic energy. Mm -hmm. Uh what happens if we just like kill all the dead things? Or like Renji, you make them disappear with your stuff. What happens if we do that? Hmm. Good question. The other body didn't disappear. No, because I used aspiration. I yeah. don't have that um, particularly. Uh, I don't have the particular ability on it. Okay. Uh, or actually, actually, yes, I do have that ability on it. Never mind. Um, so even with aspiration, one, uh, like enemies would fizzle out. Okay. Uh, because if I don't have that, I can't use charisma for it. Ah, I see. But it is not my packed weapon. Hmm. Um... Ah, because that makes mechanically no uh, difference whatsoever. Okay, that's fine. Um, so if they do, if they do pixel away, then by all means, the white that you took care of before would have pixeled away. Um, okay. But yes. Um, so uh, with this pot of ointment in tow. Um, as you are leaving, let's have a look at everybody's passive perception. 18. Um, so, uh, Max, considering where you are, you're probably the first one to hear it. <laughs> but, uh, coming from, uh, this direction. Uh, okay. Um, you hear uh, a clatter of something. Like, not necessarily like something falling over, but just movement. a repeated clunk, clunk, clunk. That matches those movements. Points that way. This way? Yes. Turn here, Liz. Okay. I can see up to here, so. Okay. Let's check out what this okay. it looks like. Very closely follow after Max. Okay. Uh, Max, where you currently are, you see what appears to be a set of stairs that head downwards into a small tunnel that goes right through to the other side of the uh, uh, of the thing. Or at least you see a tunnel that goes in one direction. Um... And it goes for goes quite a distance. Way. Yeah, like it goes under this bit. Okay. Mm. I don't particularly want to go down there yet, because this is mm. such a look yeah. up here. Is this a dead end to the north, or does that go further beyond? Uh, that is, in fact, a dead end. Okay, good to know. Um, in which case, I will begin taking the lead, because we heard the sound coming from this direction, correct? Mm hmm Okay, I will begin taking the lead, and I will hold an action to punch something if it comes at me. Okay. I do not like these tight corridors. If there's an enemy ahead, I cannot get behind it, or boop its snoot, or whatsoever. With Hikan in front of it. Hey, can you uh, how that? tall? How tall is the corridors? Fifteen feet. Okay. I'll see our, I'll see we'll be fine. I'll see our misty step. We'll be fine. Um, yeah, but that's all spell okay. slots. I take it I do not see anything down this corridor. Uh, you do not. Um, okay. You, yeah, basically, it seems to be just a standard corridor that leads to to more rooms in that direction. Um, 
was the the and then the sound because this looked like the dead end here take the sound still further beyond yeah okay cool um i will go here yeah there it is <laughs> hmm. do you make no attempt to hide in any capacity as you go around that corner i i personally do not know okay so what you see as you turn the corner appears to be a humanoid figure, roughly six feet in height. Um, the uh, individual wears full plate armor and bears a shield and a longsword in one hand. Um, oh, I see. It. Shield on one hand, longsword in the other. Um, they... Oh, is that uh, Lars Soth? No. Um, <laughs> what? Uh, Lord Soth is a, a, a bad guy from Dragonlands. Ah. Um, I don't know D and D lore. That's quite all right. Um, yeah, the uh, the individual, uh, their in like their armor appears to bear uh, symbols of Nehru, though it seems to be tattered and torn and uh, aged by quite a quite an amount. And as he mm. sees you, he stops in his tracks. And Hail Traveller. As you do you, do you say Hail Traveller? Yes. Okay. Uh, as you as you say that, um, the figure raises its longsword and a sickly green flame appear, runs right up the blade. Um, oh. and he prepares to swing it. Um, and with that, I would like everyone to roll initiative. Oh dear. What? Ah. Pulling a Lucan, I see. Pulling a what? Lucan. Lucan, Lucan is, um... One of Artie's characters who has like a plus ten initiative bonus. There you go. I see. I see. Uh... Artie, I feel sorry for your loss. <laughs> uh, it's fine. It's okay. He only has like a plus ten to initiative because he's a sorcerer and wants to go first and blow everything up. But that's fine. <laughs> uh... <laughs> initiative. That's what I mean. I see. Right. Eighteen. Oh, look, he goes first. <sighs> it's fine. It's fine. Okay. Actually, strike that. He shouldn't go first. I used the wrong character sheets thing. Ah. Oh, That's I wouldn't go first. I wanted to get close. Just check his decks and, and adjust accordingly. Yep, I did. <laughs> okay. There we go. Yes. All right. So, uh, first up is Hikan, followed by the fella here. Cool. Um, hmm. He's in full play. Fuck it. Uh, I am going to um, just uh, take a deep breath and then run. And run along the wall of the corridor, over and around him, to end up behind him. Okay. And... I'm going to punch him in the back of the head. Okay. Um, uh, that is a 29 for 8. That hits. Um, natural 1. And then a bonus unarmed strike, 22 for 14. Okay. Uh, so the natural 1 misses. On the 22, he raises his shield and bats it away, adding six to his armor class and causing it to miss. All right. Oh, no. That has used his reaction, though. Um, okay. And then on its turn, uh, mm -hmm. he bats your attack away and uses a momentum to swing the sword at the other three. Um, 
I would like everybody there to make for me a dexterity saving throw as this I... ball of flame rushes forward and explodes violently around the corner. Do not want! Technically, since I am in cover ah. from him. Phew. You should get, uh, let's see. So it's it's basically an explosion where the origin point is Renji. Yeah, but I don't know how cover works. You don't have cover. Okay. You don't have cover Thank from you. I wanted someone to, know, to tell me if I, I had cover. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, so you all pass. Ooh, nice. Um, so you take... Was this a spell? No. Okay. You take uh, six fire damage and seven necrotic damage. Okay. As this ball of hellfire violently explodes and consumes the corridor in this horrifying flame. Um, but after he's thrown that, he turns to better focus his attention on Hikan. Um, Zaiden. Um, I'll just step around here. Let's see. Well, I imagine Renji would want to get up close and stand. So yes, please and thank you. Won't block the corridor that way. Uh, what have I got? Mm -hmm. uh, that's not good. That's not good. Um. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna try and polymorph it. Okay. Into a snail. Into a snail, you say? Okay. So. A wisdom save, isn't it? Yeah. DC is seventeen. He gets an 18 on his wisdom saving throw. Ah, uh, darn. Resisting the effects of your polymorph spell. This time. Good to know. And then I will move... Uh, ...here so that I'm not in line of another one of that explosion. Okay. Max. I can't see him at my corner, can I? You can... I would allow you to be able to poke around, do a thing, and poke okay. back again if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. I'll do that because I don't want to get close to this guy. He's scared. First scary. Set him to a brain save. Okay. It's an eight. Ooh. And that's 15 psychic damage, and he gets one less on his next saving throw. Okay. I'm just checking where the spell's set. So many spells. Mm -hmm. I forgot to say, that appears to be with this particular creature. He seems particularly resistant to most spells. It didn't help him with the one beforehand. Even with advantage, he still failed. Um, mm -hmm. But with the polymorph, he would have gotten a 26 as opposed to an 18. But I'll, I'll consider that for spells going forward from this point. Hmm. All right, well. I think that's my turn, actually. OK. Renji. I move. And I will take two attacks on him with okay. Aspiration. This will be with advantage, correct? Yes, because you are flanking with Hikam. In that case, that's a 27 to hit for okay. the first attack. Uh, that is 19 points of damage for my first attack. Plus 18 is 37. 
I will remember to Hexblades curse him. Okay. For my second. Yep. And that is a natural 20. Okay. Wait a minute. Uh, no, it's not a natural 20. It's a 19, but it is Hexblades cursed. So, mm -hmm. um, that is currently... Hmm. Uh, first, 14... Okay. Plus nine. Twenty-seven. Uh, let's see. Um, wait, what? Uh, I got twenty-seven. Uh, let's see. Twelve plus two is fourteen. Plus four is eighteen. Plus six is twenty-four. Uh, twenty-seven. Indeed, you are right. Twenty-seven points. Uh, okay. Let's see. Do you need to know what it what is what? Uh, nope. It's all good. Uh, okay. If you throw necrotic or poison at him, let me know. But otherwise, it's fine. Okay. Uh, and with that, I will just step onto the sarcophagus. Uh, actually, no, I will stay here. I, uh... Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I will stay there. Okay. Can. Uh, Hikan's going to take a deep breath, and then, um, just, uh, I'll, I'm gonna preemptively spend a key point and punch this guy a bunch. Um, natural 20 for 17. Nice. 21 for 9. 14. I'm gonna assume that that doesn't hit. Because plate mail, and 13. Okay, yeah, so that's... There we go. That's a, still a lot of damage. You kind of, you mm -hmm. kind of just lay into this, uh, lay into this guy as, uh, as each kind of barrage of spell and sword and fist just collide with this bulwark of undeath. But um, he still stands and still stands in a fashion that is quite, uh, quite imposing. Um, was there anything else on your turn that you wanted to do, by the way? Uh, no, I'm staying right here. I'm gonna just keep wailing on this guy. That was my action bonus action. Okay. Um, so, on his turn, uh, he's going to uh, brace a sword against him. It shimmers briefly before what appear to be wisps of specters and spirits uh, enshroud around him. Before he raises the blade and brings it down towards you, Hikan. Is that a spell? Uh, the the spirity thing was, yes. Cool. Uh, 19 for 12 more. Uh, 19 Because of Mage Slayer. Okay, good to know. Okay, uh, so he gets a 29 to hit you for a total of uh, 28 points of damage. Um, Ouch. And also, because he was utilizing a specific spell, I just need to read the things on this one. Go for it. Uh, oh shit, this guy is as good with the longsword as I am. He deals an additional six points of necrotic damage to you as well. Um, okay. And then he's going to action surge. Um, and he's going to turn slightly to uh, Renji. And he's mm -hmm. going to tell him to halt. As he commands you to halt. Is that a wisdom saving throw, correct? Yes. Well, here goes. 19. That is just a pass. Ooh. Um, I say, I make about, me. I was about to say kind of spell when, uh, when you're all shut up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, uh, so that will be uh, that will be his turn. He has his reaction back. Zaiden. Uh, I know what I should have said. What are you going to say? Not even if you were my dad. <laughs> um, does the daylight spell count as daylight? I would think yes. so. I don't believe so, because something like Sunbeam states sunlight and daylight does not. Uh, uh, also, aspiration is, day uh, is sunlight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's weird, and I hate it, but that is rules as written. Whether or not Artie says, nah, screw that, that's dumb, is something completely different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
In this particular case, though, because it is literally the name of the spell, I would consider it daylight, personally. Uh, though I do it, get the word... It's silly. Uh, rare, rare, rare. The raw, Rose's, but... Rose's written sucks. Yeah. <laughs> if, um... Aspirations also sunlight that I don't need to test whether or not just putting light near him will help. It's already there. Unlike the scarabs, he seems undeterred by the fact that it is bright in here. Hmm. Uh, in which case... Uh, I will... Shoot him with my bow, I guess. Okay. Pew pew! Okay, that is a 25 to hit for 11, which it does. Um, Excellent. Interestingly, he doesn't seem to want to parry that in particular. Um, I thought you could yeah. only parry melee anyway. Oh yeah, so it is. So we can't parry even if we wanted to. <laughs> Hooray! And back to avoiding line of sight. Okay. I realized I had to hit enter on my new HP total. I'm like, why does it still say I'm at 91? <laughs> Turns out you didn't actually get hit at all. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, yeah, so, uh, with that done, Max! What? Uh, his brain again, because that worked last time. Okay. Uh, let's see. Talented saving throw. Gets an 18, which is still not enough. Uh, so mm -hmm. he takes a further 12. And his next saving throw has minus 2 to it. And I am going to quicken. Slow. Okay. Wisdom save, eh? 22 against that one. Yeah, it's 20. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, 20 is, is, is the Oh, yeah, 20 answer. because of the thing is still pat. Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah. I, I already forgot what Mind Sliver did. Uh, yeah. Um, but yes, uh, despite your best efforts, he seems determined not to be slowed in his, uh, in his desires to, to see you slain uh, where you stand. Um, Although, from the previous series of attacks, uh, with the fresh arrow sticking in him, um, and the bouts of strikes against him, uh, he seems to be falling apart in some variety, uh, but he's not, uh, he's not going down just yet. Um, Renji. Okay, um, I think the previous, uh, barrage went pretty well. Okay. So, might as well just go and do that again. That's a 29 to hit. That hits. Uh, sneak attack damage. Okay. Um, that is, th let's see, 29. Okay. And then the next one is 27. Okay. Uh, he, he would try and parry that, but he can't. Ooh. And that would be... 21. 21. Okay. Awesome. And okay. I will say, if you wish to continue your unlife, surrender. Um, instead of making for me a persuasion or intimidation, make for me an insight. Mm-hmm. No, that's, that's night. Uh... It's hard to read this guy. There's so much armor. Mm. It's just facial expressions and body language hidden away so well. Um, there might not even be a singular will behind his eyes. Okay. Uh, is that your turn? Um, let's see if I have something of a bonus action. Uh... I don't think I have anything in particular beyond 
cunning action. Uh, no. No? No, I wouldn't have anything here in particular, like Misty Step or Disengage, but I don't need Disengage right now, and I don't want to move anyway. Okay. It can. I'm going to punch this guy. I'm going to punch him a lot. We're going to start with one. Okay. Uh, 19 misses. Going to try again. Six, 17 misses. Going to try again. Uh, that is a soft 20. He, he decides to parry that one in particular. Uh, okay. And then the last one, because I forgot to say it's did for your blows. Uh, 13. And sadly, that is not a hit. Um, so essentially, like despite the despite the disrepair that this thing appears to be in, um, <laughs> he's doing a damn good job keeping you at bay. Um, just kind of brings up the shield, block, 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 um, and is kind of like slowly backing more towards Renji, um, just to get some more distance and kind of like try and push the. Uh, push the, the the opponent behind him off kilter like not mechanically just kind of like just uh, advance backwards um, uh, but yeah uh, do you want to move anywhere or are you going to stay right here I'm going to stay right here alright um, okay uh, so on his turn what he is going to do is he's going to bring the sword up again. You can tell he's trying to cast a spell, so feel free to do your th your mage cool. slayer thing. Twenty one. Um, twenty one. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, that hits. Okay. I'd like him to make a Constitution saving throw for me. Okay. It's a fifteen. He fails. He's stunned. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> Stunning strike. Nice. Um, very yeah. good. Uh, it appears that there would have been there was this uh, roiling oh, I, hmm? as he's sitting there parrying all of the stuff as I'm pushing him back he gets ready to counter attack and then I just get right underneath or right to the side of his shield and just smirk as I punch him wherever it is that I think is good and he just freezes for a moment yeah you manage to find just a, a, ga a literal gap in his armor and there's a <laughs> as you hit something soft and vulnerable and he just probably kind of... whatever probably whatever he died to the first time yeah <laughs> uh, okay uh so he is stunned and cannot act i'm guessing until the end of your next turn because of stunning strike Correct. yeah Correct. awesome i'll just nice. click it so we can reference it yeah um okay and that was a sp that wasn't the spell either so he didn't have advantage against it even though that really didn't save him anyway um <laughs> <laughs> so Zayden, your opponent is stunned. Stunned, you say? Quickly looking up the effects. Uh, yeah. Advantage on attacks, cannot make actions or reactions, and... Uh, Automatically fails or strength move. and dex. Mm -hmm. uh, hmm... He's also lost concentration on that spirit shroud thing that he was doing beforehand, so that's also gone. Um, nice! Yeah. Yeah, that's wisdom. Don't really want to cast fairy fire since it'd be, uh. I'd have to shine one of my allies up. Probably here, can. Unless Hakan's really, really good at dodging fairy fire. Really good at dodging. <laughs> if you want to risk it, I'll take it. I, I am perfectly fine if it's a deck save. Okay. I'll, I'll cast fairy fire on it. Okay. Cast fairy yeah. fire. I think he automatically fails the save, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. Yep. 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 So he is but, he is a glowing. Um, that advantage is maintained now. Nice. Okay. Now put back. Run away! Max! Well... <clears throat> Sit right here. Duck! Quack! And I... I go down. <laughs> okay, that's a 26 to hit for 16. Uh... Let me just roll the thing. Which ball? Uh, 
that is not enough on his undead constitution in order to maintain himself after that bout of damage. How would you like to do this? I'll do duck at Ranchi. He makes a bad joke. Um, I don't know. That's okay. Just um, fucking explode him, I guess. Yep. So, that works. Yeah. Uh, so, utilizing the... Um, even though he is fully made of, made of metal with his plate mail, uh, utilizing the the arrow as a as a target uh the stun from the um uh, from uh the monk and the uh weakening of his armor and general physical being from the many blows from the uh uh from the uh sun sun bladed weapon um you send forth this bolt of lightning which travels gracefully through the air arcs over your ally and slams dead on into uh, into the back of this creature. It is a bright, multicolored light show as it as the lightning mixes with the fairy fire before eventually what was once within this armor expires once again and it tumbles to the ground with a loud uh, dreadful clatter. Um, and yeah. You are once again left alone in the halls of of this of this area. Um, Does it sound like anything was alerted by the fight? Make for me perception checks. Hmm. All right. I'm down a few healing potions as necessary. Uh, 26. I'm going to drink one of mine as well. 16. Uh, with a 26 will... perception, mm -hmm. you, um, you don't hear anything immediately. Um, Renji, with your perception, it's not what you hear, it's what you see. What you see on the belt of the uh, of this creature is a decrepit, like the remains of what appears to be a decrepit, curled horn. Um, mm -hmm. You assume that probably would have been something akin to a wake up call for any additional undead creatures that exist in this uh, in this particular space. Mm. I think I will drive aspiration through it. Okay. Yeah. Not through the uh, dead body. Yeah. Uh, you deal one final blow to the uh, uh, to the uh, instrument in question, uh, rendering it completely useless. Insight check to why he didn't take a chance to blow it. Uh, sure, go for it. Just curious. Sixteen. Um. In most instances, it's entirely possible that uh, by the time, because you went before him in combat, uh, it's possible that because you were already upon him, um, he wouldn't have had, he probably didn't think to have the luxury in order to blow it. Which is interesting because if this entity is someone that is something that has no will of its own, if it is just a mindless undead, then maybe it having the tactical capability to this make that decision as poor as it may have been um was something outside of what you would expect a mindless controlled robot effectively to be um but then it also was casting spells so maybe the nature of its control if it is in in fact mindless uh is something that um is something a bit more refined maybe it just has no ability to make its own decisions outside of its own instincts and training it's hard to say maybe, maybe it's just a pile of if then statements yeah <laughs> it's just a very basic bayesian belief robot that's it <laughs> oh, that's sad if okay base mark was sold yeah do we want to keep looking for magic 
I have to pick up the pace a bit. Possibly. We uh, need to get that battery and get out of here as soon as possible because. Uh... Okay. Hey. Considering the size behind us. Let's try and avoid okay. more fights too. Yeah, considering the size of this map, um, I'm going to say that for this particular instance, uh, since you have now dealt with the one key combat encounter, um, I would like uh, a series of investigation checks. Um, I you... help. <laughs> as you look I, around. I, I also help. My investigation so... is plus two. I have plus so... zero, so plus I help five. someone. Five. Okay, so, so me and one help helps Sidon. Me yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I am not risking it. I know I've been rolling really well on intelligence checks in this place. No. Or. <laughs> oh, sorry. Let's just use the first one. Uh, that's a 20. Okay. So. It takes a little bit of time. Utilizing your detect magic capabilities, you go through some of these places and uh, identify a, uh, a couple of chests that have a few magical items in them um in particular just gonna do some some more table rolling mm -hmm. yay tables they do like me some tables i can get to the damn tables themselves mm. uh, Okay. Uh, one of them, you find what appears to be a uh, a rather elegantly made glass bottle, uh, in which appears to be some clear water, or at least a clear liquid that may be water. Vodka. Um, <laughs> is, the <laughs> liquid um, is the liquid magic, or is the bottle magic, or is the liquid is magic? Magical. Liquid is magic, so vodka. Oh, I can smell. Is it vodka? Because I would know. Uh, it is not vodka. <laughs> Okay. Uh, clear. <laughs> liquid. Uh. Oh, wow. Nope. Ooh. Okay. Interesting. I like it when he says, oh, wow, on the uh, yeah, tables too, that we want. I'm very worried. Uh, the next thing that you find appears to be a gold chain necklace that is around the body of this, uh, the neck of this corpse. Uh, at the end of which appears to be a uh, an ivory forearm, which is grasping onto a gold ring, which in turn is around a heart, um, like a idealized, romanticized heart, uh, on one side of which is a smiling face, on the other side of which is a sad face. Hmm. Okay. And then the final one, um, oh. as you... Uh, as you push open this uh, this sarcophagus, you find inside what appears to be uh, the body of a creature that you had not really encountered before. The sarcophagus itself is slightly larger than the others, um, mm -hmm. and it looks like the entity inside is a humanoid uh, figure. They are wearing clothes. However, they have the shape and form of what appears to be a hippopotamus. Um, and oh, no. clasped in their hands is a cylindrical object um, that looks like it prob has the same kind of uh, sweeping designs um, of the spell jammer. Grab oh, it. that's probably the captain. I do not know this. Well, Renji <laughs> does not know this. Grab it. Yeah, I will yeah. grab it. You grab it. Um, and with that, you have acquired your prize. Uh, Max has to hold it, because if someone else is going to fly the ship, he's going to be the one filling it with spell slots, so... How old does this corpse look? Uh, give me a, give me a medicine check. Mm, I'm going to not do well with this. Thirteen. Okay. Um, with a 13, uh, you estimate that this corpse has been dead for at least 
two or three weeks. But then again, time is weird mm. here, so it's difficult to tell. Um, okay. But no, like it. Gonna... Okay. No, okay. Yeah, I was just gonna say, uh, it at your best, like yeah, time is weird, but yeah, your best estimate, it has the same kind of rotting and decomposition uh, ah. state of being a couple of weeks old. Okay. Right, Maz is gonna examine the thing to see how to put magic in it. Okay. Uh, as, give me as an... we're going wherever we're going. Yeah. Um, I think backtracking. Yeah. Uh, as you uh, as you make your way back outside, um, and of course on the way out you pick up a torch. Uh, thankfully, there hadn't been many scarabs that turned up in order to try and follow you in. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we remove the immovable rod. Yep. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, as you as you walk out with it, uh, with the with the cylinder, I'd like uh, the one examining it to give me an Arcana check. Okay. Fourteen. Hmm. You um, you examine the item. Uh, the the full purpose of it and how to put magic into it escapes you at the moment. Maybe it will be a bit clearer when you get back to the ship itself. Okay. Um, but yes, uh, as you're making your way back, uh, the question now looms before we end the session for the day. Um, did you want to alert the people of Masro now that you're making your way out? Or did you want to alert them when you get back and have figured things out? I do think... Do have a way of doing that? I think the latter, if that we can, uh, pick them up. Yeah, I think uh, I think Simeon suggested if you have any kind of a spell that could make like a firework or something, they could. Oh yeah, potentially right. See it from yes. Okay, mm -hmm. fire firebolt then. Okay. Um, yeah. So you were going to say you were opting to do it when you got back to the ship. Yeah. Or are you can do that now. Okay. All right. I um, think yeah, back at the ship. Yeah. All right. Okay. And with that, we will end the session for today. Um, thank you. Everybody, so much for watching. Uh, this has been Articulate Tea. Uh, this has been the Legend of Zelda D and D Five uh, E campaign, uh, Hyrule Chronicles, episode number ninety nine. Um, ninety nine. Ninety nine. Uh, there, there, we will. We do need to have a beach episode. <laughs> like, I mean, we can you might just like back... have a flash forward. That's also <laughs> fine. Max is going to be the one just sitting, arms folded in the tent, just like, I don't like this. Well, we'll see. <laughs> we'll, we'll do... I think what we could probably do is we could do a normal session next next week for number 100, and then we can do an unnumbered special episode in celebration of 100 if we wanted to. Oh, okay. that'd be nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, we'll figure it out. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll figure something out. Um, it's... It'd be, yeah... Thank you very much for watching. The, 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 the Omake episode. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yep. As uh, always, Yonkoma. I have had with me Ranji Vox being played by the Nettle Lad. Nobody tells me what to do. <laughs> I have Hikansio being played by Avarance. Mage Slayer. <laughs> <laughs> I have Zayn Yashari being played by Robopart. Oh. And I have had Max being played by Kistrith. Got me a new toy. Yay. Yay. And we'll see you guys next time. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye now.